The best way to reduce global warming is, without any doubt, cutting down our anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases. Now, but the world economy is addicted to energy, which is mainly produced by, you know what, fossil fuels. And as economic growth and increasing world population require more and more energy, we cannot stop using fossil fuels quickly, at least not in a short term. And in desperation to stop global warming, scientists are now looking at various ways of geoengineering to curb the rising crisis. Now let's start with space mirrors. What are these? You see, space mirrors, they're firing trillions of tiny aluminium mirrors into space deflects sunlight. These help control maximum radiation emitted from the sun, reducing the effect of greenhouse gas emissions. Second is cloud seeding which is essentially spraying seawater into clouds to precipitate rain. That is essentially what you're trying to do. It is a type of weather modification that aims to change the amount or type of precipitation that falls from clouds by dispersing substances into the air that serve as cloud condensation. Next is engineered microbes. Now, what are these? Microbial genetic engineering uses genetic operation tools to share, splice and integrate the target genes and then introduce them into chassis cells. Now, in common words, scientists create synthetic microbes and engineered algae to sequester carbon dioxide. Next, we of course talk about ocean fertilization. Now, ocean fertilization is essentially adding iron or nitrogen to the oceans to promote carbon sequester sequestration by phytoplankton. Now, ocean fertilization or ocean nourishment is a type of technology for carbon dioxide removal from the oceans and to restore plant nutrients. Next up is enhanced weathering. Let's take a look at that. Enhanced weathering is a process that aims to accelerate the natural weathering by spreading finely ground silicate rock such as basalt onto surfaces which speed up chemical reactions between rocks water and air another valuable concept to curb emissions is biochar which we talk about next now biochar is the lightweight black residue made of carbon and ashes produced from plant matter the component is stored in the soil as a means of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and second to last is artificial trees Artificial trees or mechanical trees are vertical columns of discs coated with a chemical resin, which when air blows absorbs carbon dioxide from the discs. Now these discs then sink in the barrel below and release carbon dioxide in a closed environment. Lastly, we have climate resilient crops. What are these? Now if crops don't adapt to climate change, neither will agriculture and neither will we. The concept introduces creating paler crops to reflect light and increase the use of crops that are drought resistant. And these are climate ready crops which we are of course talking about. Now while using engineering technologies to combat the climate crisis, a welcome solution, more needs to be done and this is what experts say. Eventually after global emissions hit net zero and enough carbon is removed, the world could stop using Go geoengineering without global temperatures shooting back up. However, it remains uncertain how long it would take to reach that point. All right, for more on this, Daniel Schrag, who is a professor of environmental science and engineering and director of the Harvard University Center for the Environment, joins us live from Cambridge. Daniel, climate engineering may offer a last ditch technological solution to catastrophic climate change, but who makes the decisions on which solutions to implement and who will the beneficiaries really be? Talk to us about that. I don't think solar geoengineering or climate engineering is a last ditch uh, solution. I don't think it's a solution at all. It, it's really a tourniquet that we're putting on a wound that continues to get worse. You know, the climate system is changing because we've been burning fossil fuels and we're continuing to use fossil fuels. And given how difficult it is to decarbonize the global economy, the climate is going to get much warmer in the coming decades and centuries. And solar geoengineering or climate engineering has the possibility of reducing the suffering for many people. That being said, the biggest challenge is, I think, exactly what you identified, which is who gets to control it? Who gets to decide how much um, of it we use? Uh, 
and that is very problematic. You know, who gets to decide who controls the thermostat for the whole planet? That's a very difficult issue, and I don't think we've figured that out just yet. All right. Now, Daniel, the UK government advisors say there is no coherent program to encourage people to change their high carbon lifestyles. There is no clear policy to decarbonize steel production or emissions from other heavy industries as well. How do you think that will work out? Talk to us about that. So I think that the world is in the early stages of the process of decarbonization. That is the removal of CO2 emissions from the atmosphere. Um, and and uh, we're in the early stages. Now, to be fair, uh, rich countries have embraced wind and solar. Those uh, numbers in the air electricity mix have gone way up in the last two decades. And these hard problems of decarbonizing industry or uh, transportation, um, they're really difficult challenges, but but they're working hard on it. But that being said, it's going to take a while. Um, as far as as far as high carbon lifestyles, ultimately, I believe the solution is not to make people um, try to try to deprive people, but actually to get people to change technology. Ultimately, when when there's clean technology available, people can use as much energy as they want without polluting the atmosphere. But they have to be responsible for the pollution they put in the atmosphere. And that's that's what we need to promote around the world. Now, the European Commission recently called for international discussions on risks of climate engineering, with US and China battling strain ties, including on climate issues. Can Europe lead the way here, Daniel? You know, I, I don't think Europe is likely to lead the way in this, um, partly because I think they have a very pure and maybe admirable agenda of complete decarbonization by 2050. I don't think it's likely to be achieved. Um, and I also think that there's a little bit of um, maybe maybe a little bit of naivete about about the likelihood of the rest of the world following in their footsteps. Decarbonizing the whole world is really challenging, and um, I hope that it goes much faster than it has happening right now. But um, the reality is that, that the climate is going to warm up significantly. And the timescales in the Earth system, in the ocean, in the ice sheets, in many different parts of the Earth system are very long, centuries, millennia. And so we've, we've unleashed something that has incredible inertia. And uh, while solar engineering well, solar geoengineering or climate engineering is a terrifying idea. It may actually be the one way to protect people from um, harm. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. It's a terrible thing. But the alternative may be even worse. All right. That was Professor Daniel Schrag who joined us from Cambridge with all his inputs.